Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, we will be talking about VSTOL little more explicitly because if you see the last lecture it was an attempt to understand how do I decide how, a, how an engineer will decide or a designer will decide what should be the wing loading for takeoff or wing loading for landing right. If you see VSTOL is given by 2 W by S rho C L max and as per the regulations V take off be around 1.1 V stall. Please understand these specifications may be slightly different for air, military aircraft or a civil aircraft. When you are designing an aircraft, you have to follow some regulations and you have to follow strictly those specifications. Part of this lecture is to give you the understanding what we should do. Now it is very important why we are spending so much time on V takeoff. If we carefully see what is basically a takeoff. The airplane starts warming up on the tarmac, the pilot puts the throttle, appropriate throttle and it starts gaining speed at a speed which we call V lift off. The pilot will turn the nose and set an angle of attack and it will have a transient flight here and then from here it will climb. And it should by regulation clear 50 feet height or a 35 feet height depending upon military or civil aircraft. Once it satisfies this complete condition, that distance is strictly speaking takeoff distance, right. But there is a challenge for the designer, he will try to see that this distance from here to here which we can call it S lift off, you try to reduce it as far as possible. And what is then the requirement if you want to reduce this S lift off, this distance from here to here, I should accelerate the airplane faster so that from 0 quickly it comes to V lift off, it rolls the airplane and climbs. So there is a demand for large T by W if you want to reduce S lift off. But the problem is the moment you want to change or put a higher engine, higher power engine, the weight penalty is there, maintenance penalty is there, cost penalty is there. So why not? We also try to find alternative way of meeting this requirement through wing loading or through CL max because you know very well T by W required for cruise is more governed by aerodynamic efficiency the CL by CD and CL by CD typically it will be 15. So T by W required during cruise will be 1 by 15 so less than 0 0.1 right. But for climb it will be more, for climb you know T by W will be sin gamma plus 1 by C L by C D and gamma if it is 10 degree so you can see it 0.2 or 0.25 unless you want to accelerate fast so that additional component will get added. So meaning thereby T by W is more governed or dictated by 
by cruise, by climb, by turn rate, by different accelerations. So why do you unnecessarily tax the engine primarily for reducing X lift off if there are other options available, right? So a designer will always look for, okay, if I want to reduce V stall, I will see that W by S is lower and or CL max I increase. Because if I can locally increase CL max during takeoff, then I, I, I will be able to handle this issue knowing very well that if I keep higher CL max, there will be higher induced drag. Right. But during cruise, I do not require that much of CL max because that time CL max, CL requirements are not that high, maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So the whole attention goes when you talk in terms of V takeoff, which is some percentage of V stall, it goes towards CL max. How can I increase CL max? And you are aware we can increase CL max by using high lift devices. Loosely we say we introduce flaps. For example, if I take a plain wing, it's a plain wing, its CL max, I can say not a bad selection if it is 1.2, mostly airfoil will have CL max 1.2. By contouring the aerofoil, you can, you have, might be seeing that you can change it from 1.2 to 1.5, around that, okay. Now what we do is, we know that if somehow if I can change the camber of the wing locally, it will help in increasing CL max. So that is where this concept of flap came. During takeoff, you, you just deflect the flaps. Flaps are, you will see in our aircraft also, there are fla plane flaps. These are plane flaps, which can be deflected downward. And in the process, what we have done, we have changed the camber of the wing. You should be careful that by deflecting this flap, only some portion of the wing aerofoil has been made given additional camber, not all the portion, right? That is one of the important uh, observations you must have. And if you do that, you can enhance this from 1.2 to 1.8. These are some tentative number, right? Okay. So this is called plane flap. Now there was a, another interesting uh, design, and you must appreciate this. This is called a split flap. What is done in a split, a split flap? That you not only give a deflection here, you can also give it a motion like this, right? So it, it, if you see, it opens up like this, and it can also go forward. So what it is doing? It is not only changing the camber, it is also increasing the area. So you have double advantage. So this is one of the fantastic thought process, innovation. And you'll find many aerofoil and flap combinations are based on this silently, right? There, there are values added to that, but this is one of the fantastic observation and in fact you will find this 1.8 when you try to reach 1.8 or mostly common aerofoil it is the split aerofoil that will help you you select a split aerofoil uh, flaps now the question is the moment i split it like this i deflect it like this there is a possibility of flow getting separated from the top right if some something if i deflect it like this flow is coming from here, they may separate. So you may not get that efficiency, that sort of a CL max. So what is the way to handle it? 
if something is getting separated from here, I want to delay it. Delay means how can I do a delay? By pumping energy to it, right? So what is done? Suppose if I create a slot here, let the airflow comes here and they go. So because this is a small area, so a lot of speed increment will be there. So that will impart kinetic energy to the fluid and the separation will be delayed and a process you get CL mass. So this concept is used for single slotted flap. The concept is simple as we have just discussed this is the aerofoil and now you once you deflect the flap ensure that there is a gap right so the air will come and they will go through this and that should help in delaying the separation so i can deflect it further right but be careful as a designer I should contour this portion in such a way that the flow really goes like this. If we have done a contouring here wrongly, the flow may go like this, right? So there are a lot of CFD studies, a lot of wind tunnel studies goes on and you actually design this slot, right? So this is covered under single slotted flap, right? The moment there were single slotted flaps, so there was also demand for the idea got extended, double slotted flap, now you know that it should not be difficult for you to visualize what is a double slotted flap, one like this, another like this, right? Say so suppose by giving 65 degrees, this, this will uh, separate, you do not give 65 to it, give another 15 you give it to this, now everywhere there is a hole. So now you can have a more efficient enhancement in the CL max. Is this clear part, what I am saying? Suppose you, if you deflect this, and there is a slot, by say 50 degrees, and you are worried, even if I am having a slot, this may separate, right? So do not do this. What you said is, okay, you give it to Gradually you increase it. For this you may make it to 30 degree and this can be 20 degree because you know flow is also coming from here. So overall effectiveness you can increase. And if you see the typical numbers for a single slotted it will be around 2.2. These are just typical order of magnitude. Okay? You have to see charts to get the exact value or you have to go for a tunnel testing. The story does not end here. Once this concept is understood that if I put a slot, I can delay the separation, so I can increase the deflections. So there came triple slotted flaps. How should it look like? This is this is one, this is two, and this is three. Right? You can go on doing it and for a triple slotted flap, you can aim up to 3.1. But whenever you are adding those flaps, please understand it will also have some drag component. It will also have a maintenance issues. Right? So that is why the aerodynamics, they work on what are those combinations, especially what should be the aerofoil, what should be the this sort of a slot dimension so that CL by CD is not compromised, right? There is a lot of work goes on designing multi aerofoil high lift devices, okay? There is another popular high lift devices Fowler flap which is typically inspired by the concept of split flap and that is can go down also move but with a slot. 
split flag with a slot roughly you can assume that there is a forward flag. So, what is being done? One is using the split flap concept, the cord is extended, the camber is extended and also you are putting a slot, so flow separation will be delayed. It is simple, no high maintenance is required, the designer will always love to have it as long as he is within a particular weight class. right? If it is a huge airplane, then naturally you need to enhance CL max up to 4 or 5. So, there you have to go for all these complicated flaps. Right. This is another uh, thing you must understand. We are talking about slot, so there is something called slat. That is leading edge slat. You put something like this in the leading edge. Right? Or if I draw it correctly, uh, maintaining the contour. So, at the leading edge it is there. So, from the leading edge there will be flow going to energize the flow behind that will also delay the stall. So, you immediately you see that if I have a double slotted flap is 2.7 I could achieve. But if I add with slat also slat not slot, I can go up to 3. Then this triple slot, if I put a slat here, that is I put something here, right? Then I can go up to 3.5. So all these things, all these high lift devices is going to affect CL max. And you can understand from 1.2 or 1.5, if you are going to 3, how much enhancement is there, right? Because the V stall goes down, so V takeoff goes down, the lift off distance goes down. That is very, very important, okay? Just to give you a feel for number, this regular transport aircraft, the CL max. This is the order of around 2.4 to 3, around this. So, if you are designing a regional transport aircraft, I will recommend you, you assume CL max to be around 2.2 or 2.3, right, and then start calculation. Once we are talking about CL max, we are focused towards wing. So, this is our flap, the aileron will be somewhere here. When I am deflecting these flaps, I need to know what should be the CL max. How, as a designer, I know roughly how much CL max it will really generate because once I deflect this, only this portion, which is the flapped area, their camber will change, right? But here the camber remains same. So, how do I get a rough? value of C L max once I have deflected this flaps. The assumption is if the aspect ratio is more than 6, then 3 D C L max will be roughly equal to 0.9 of the aerofoil C L max. You know the relationship C L alpha 3D is CL alpha 2D by 1 plus CL alpha 2D by pi aspect ratio E. So typically, 90% is a good estimate. Okay. And then for CL max of this wing, you can use this as a good initial estimate because 90% is so 0.9 into CL max. This is flapped into S flapped by S reference, which is the wing area, plus CL unflapped into S unflapped by S reference.
and please note that what is CL unflapped? This is very important. Is the lift coefficient of the unflapped aerofoil at angle of attack at which flapped aerofoil stalls. This statement is important. Please understand this. We are asking a question, what will be the CL unflapped? See, the moment you are flapping, when you are putting this flaps down, its stall angle will reduce because the camber has increased. Remember, if this is CL versus alpha, if this is symmetric for camber, CL max enhancement is there, but stall angle will reduce, right. So, how much CL this portion will generate will depend upon the situation that this gentleman should not stall. So, let us say its stall angle is 10 degrees, then you only will calculate C L of this portion corresponding to alpha equal to 10 degree. Is this clear? Right. So, this is a very, very important statement. All these expressions are to develop feel for the numbers, but you will see that uh, there are historical charts which will give you different values of C L max for different types of flaps and we will add that also in this lecture or in the, in the assignments. Now, we are coming back to what will be the wing loading required to maintain a V stall. As I told you, we have to go back to the regulatory bodies recommendation for different class of aircraft. I am just giving one example as far as FAR 23, it is a very old specification. We will be giving you all new specification which is more standardized. What it says for less than 12,500 pounds, this is a take off gross weight, requirement is the V stall must not, must not be more than 61 knots. This is important, this number. Whatever you do, if you, this is this weight class, it cannot have more than 61 knots V stall. The moment you know 61 knots is let us say roughly equal to 30 meter per second, right? I am assuming it is almost half of it. So, your V stall is V stall is 30 meter per second and then you equate it to 2 W by S. Select what is the critical altitude at which you will be flying. They are mostly in Delhi, in winter and summer. If it is winter, then you put the density of air during winter because that is will give larger W by S. So, depending upon what is the altitude, you put that number and depending upon what sort of aircraft you are using and what sort of that aircraft is complemented with high lift devices. For a general aviation airplane like Cessna 206 and all, you will find plane flaps are good enough. So, you will put a number if it is a plane flap, it may be 1.5, if it is a split flap, you may put 1.8, if it has a slot, you will put that number and now using this, you can easily find out W by S from stall or V stall 
requirement. This is for from takeoff point of view. From takeoff. So if I write more explicitly, W by S for takeoff will be half rho V stall square into C L max. If you see here, there is a slight error which has come and you need to be careful about it. That is why I will now from here I will come to the observation that we often commit error like this although that is a small. What is the specification? It says V stall cannot be more than or less than equal to 61 knots. But please understand this is V stall, V takeoff will be around 1.1 times V stall. So, when you are taking off, you are not flying at C L max condition, right? It is obvious that if you are going to take off, you are operating at an alpha stall, the slight change in the angle of attack will put the aircraft to stall. Why should you fly like that? I should not plan for a takeoff more than 8, 9 degrees from safety point of view. So, another question may come to your mind, when I am taking off, why I am telling that it is very critical, there are many accidents. Remember, the, there is a human tendency to reduce the T by W requirement, because T by W enhancement means you have to have larger engine, larger maintenance, the cost goes high. So, you try to reduce it. You know? In the process, what you do, you are not left with large excess power. Okay? And if it is a jet engine, already you know, if it is a jet engine, then excess power which actually talks about your rate of climb, that bandwidth is very small in comparison to a propeller driven aircraft. For a propeller driven aircraft, you know that if this is the power, this is, there are huge excess power available. But for a jet driven, that gap is not that high. And how does a pilot goes for a takeoff? Let us also see that. He starts with V equal to 0, accelerates and he at time when he has got enough we lift off, you should rotate the airplane and then climb, right. But let us say the pilot does a judgment error earlier days and you do not have excess power and he tries to lift off here, what will happen? Do you not get sufficient lift, right? But he will the pilot will again try to pull the stick to get the lift and he go into the stall and premature stall premature takeoff and he lands like this. You might have seen one of the accidents of Hansa 3, when we lost one of our pilot, right? what he was trying to do some maneuver, bad luck for all of us. That is also an example of a premature takeoff, that you go and try to turn and take off like this and you stall and the wing fall like this and the pilot lost his life. So, that is why I am spending time on take off and you should all understand how important is this. That is why wing loading I am connecting here and we have to be as a designer we have to be very very clear. But the problem is if wing loading is lower that means wing area is higher you know drag will increase, such requirement will increase then it will be more sensitive to wind. So, all those handling qualities problem also will come you will not be able to accelerate very fast. If W by S is lower, so area is more, so drag will be more, so you will not be able to accelerate, you need more power. So, all this conflict will come for a designer, right. Okay, thank you.